What's up team? Today we're talking rate of change. Uh, you'll see the learning target above me. I can calculate and interpret the rate of change for a function and I can understand the connection between rate of change and the slope of a line. We're going to talk about all that today. A few reminders right underneath that. Uh, those reminders will make more sense as we move through this. Okay, first things first. The minimum wage in Washington State in 2020 is $13.50. That is, if and only if you are 16 years old. If you are 14 or 15, employers uh, get to pay you 85% of that. Bummer. Um, but in general, the minimum wage is $13.50. Um, my first job, it was the summer of 2006. I worked at Outback Steakhouse as a busser. I made, I think it was $7.50 an hour, um, and, that's, and I was thrilled to do it. So uh, lucky you, you get to make a little bit more than that for working the same job that I did um, when I was uh, between my 10th and 11th grade years of high school. Okay. All right, this table here, it shows how much money you would make for working uh, different amounts of hours at minimum wage. So I followed this function, f of x equals 1350 times x. In this case, x is our input and that's the number of hours worked. f of x, that's our output and that's the total money earned. Of course, this is before taxes and other deductions. We're not gonna worry about those for, for today. So if you work a two hour day, nice and short and sweet, uh, the, your employer then owes you $27. If you work four hours, it's $54, seven hours, $94.50. And if you work a super long day, 11 hours, it's, it's uh, your employer owes you $148.50. The way that I found all these is I just plugged, uh, I found F of two. Uh, so I did two times 13.50, then I found F of four, F of seven, and F of 11. Okay, we wanna find the rate of change from this here data. So we have this data that's final. Well, we want to find the rate of change. And the rate of change really is just how much does the f of x column go up every time the x column goes up by one and only one. So we can't, it's not as simple as doing like 54 minus 27, because that's how much uh, change was made uh, between these two numbers here. Because this, uh, the x values are going up by two, not just by one. If they were going up by one, it'd be simple as doing that subtraction, but we don't have that luxury for this time. So the rate of change, the equation uh, or the, um, the formula that we use is the same thing that we use for slope. So the rate of change, oh. So the formula for rate of change is here, delta y over delta x. If this is not familiar to you, if this is something you're looking at being like, oh, what the heck, I don't even know what that means, please go back and watch my intro to slopes video. I explain it, uh, I explain it better there, I explain it period. I'm not gonna explain it, I'm just gonna use it for the purpose of this video. So delta y over delta x, that means we need to pick two points out, find the difference in the y values and the difference in the x values. Any two of these points are gonna work. I'm gonna pick two at random. Um, how about this one and this one? I could have picked the other two. I could have mixed and matched. It doesn't matter. You're gonna get the same result every time. So now we need to name these points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Uh, just because these ones are smaller, I'm gonna name this x1, and this is gonna be my y1 and then x2, y2. And then we're just gonna plug and chug here. So on top here for our using the, the delta y, we're gonna do 148.50 minus the other y value, which is $54. And then on the bottom, we're gonna do 11 minus four, which is x2 minus x1. So I went ahead and figured this out. I plugged this into my calculator. I got 94.5, 11 minus four is seven. Now, uh, we can take this one step further, even though it feels funny, we have a decimal and a fraction, whatever, that's fine. So I plugged this into my calculator and the result was 13.5. So in our case, our f of x happens to be dollars, it's talking about dollars earned. So this is saying every time x goes up by one, the f of x goes up by 13.50. Now that shouldn't be much of a surprise for this example, because I really, I gave away the answer at the very beginning of the problem. I told you that minimum wage was 13.50 and that's what we were earning. So in this case, it, it, it's true, that's what, that's what it is. We're gonna do another example where it's not gonna be quite this simple. Uh, one, you're not gonna have the, uh, the rate of change going into it, but also there's gonna be an added wrinkle to the problem. Okay, here's a second set of data. Here's the scenario. This is uh, for a video game club. You have to buy in, so you have to spend money one time and one time only, and you're in the club. If you're in this club, you get discounted video games. Every game costs the exact same amount and it's cheaper than it normally would be. So for this particular club, if you were to buy into this club, if you were to pay your fee and buy one game, you would have spent a total of $135. That seems like a really bad deal. But if you keep buying more and more games, the, deals get be the deal feels better and better if, you're, uh, if you have to buy a bunch of games. 
So by five games, you've spent a total of $275, 10 games, it's 450, and so on. You can see what is happening here. Our task, we're gonna find the rate of change and we're gonna find out what that initial fee was. We're also gonna come up with a function uh, that describes this, or sorry, an equation that describes this function and determine what the slope of it would be. Okay, let's start with finding the rate of change. So here's what I've done. I wrote the formula, I picked two points at random. Again, you can pick any of these points and follow the same process, you're gonna find the same result. So let's plug this stuff in, Y2 minus Y1. So that's 800 minus 275. And then the bottom, X2 minus X1, that is 20 minus five. Okay, I plugged that in my calculator. I got 525 divided by 15. And when I plugged that in my calculator, I learned that it's 35 over one or just 35. So our rate of change is 35. What does that mean? Let's interpret that. So this video game situation, that means every time X goes up by one, the F of X goes up by 35. So every time I buy a new game, I'm paying an additional $35. That means every game I'm purchasing is only $35. This club sounds like a deal all of a sudden if I'm buying a bunch of games. Again, if I'm only buying one game, not a great deal. But if I'm buying a bunch of games, I'm only paying $35 each and they're brand new in the box. Uh, this seems like a good club to be a part of. Okay. We're now gonna create an equation for this function. And with that equation, we're gonna solve and find out how much the initial fee was. So the equation of this function is gonna be f of x, our output equals some stuff, right? And then we need to figure out what that stuff is. Well, if our rate of change is 35, we'll start there. And we're gonna say 35 times x. Here's why. Because every time x increases by one, the f of x goes up by 35. So think about it this way. If, if x is one, it's one times 35, f of x is 35, cool. If it's two, well then we add another 35 because now it's 35 times two. If that X is three, then we multiply by three and F of X goes up by 35, et cetera, that keeps going. So our rate of change is always gonna be multiplied by whatever our input is. Um, and which it's 99.999% of the time, it's gonna be an X. So uh, F of X equals 35 X, but we're not done yet. There's more to this. There's some initial fee and we don't know what that fee is. So I'm just gonna call it F at this point in time. And that's what we're gonna solve for. So gross, now we have a, uh, an equation with one, two, three different variables. We have three unknowns. We can't solve that. But what we also have is we have all of these ordered pairs. All of these ordered pairs are X's and F of X ordered pairs. So we can pick one, it doesn't matter which one we pick and we're gonna plug whatever number over here in for X and it's matching counterpart F of X over on the other side and solve. So we can pick any of these. I'm gonna pick the easiest one here, and we're gonna go with one, 135. So our X value is one, so I'll sub that in here. F of X is 135, I'll sub that in on the other side. So we have 135 equals 35 times our X value, which is one, that's gonna be some nice easy multiplication, plus F, the F has not changed yet. We know that 35 times one is 35, so if I subtract 35 from the right, that goes away. If I subtract 35 from the left, I learned that 100 equals F. And if I flip that around, I find that F equals 100. So this means that our initial fee is $100. So to join the club, you've got to pay hundred bucks upfront, but you're paying that once and only once. And then for the rest of your time in this club, you are paying just $35 per game. That's pretty cool. Okay, now let's wrap this thing up and we'll write out an equation for the function with all the information we have. We now have the initial fee and the rate of change. So our function, I'm gonna write it up here, is gonna be f of x, so the total amount of money that we spend, that's what f of x represents here, equals 35 times x. So our rate of change times the number of games we purchase plus the one-time fee of $100. So this is the equation of, our, uh, of this function. Now, how does this relate to uh, slope? Well, you may have noticed this delta y over delta x is the same exact equation that we use for slope or the same formula we use for slope. So this 35, which is also this 35, that's where it came from, that's our slope. Our slope here is 35 over one. So if you're doing some rise over run, uh, you're gonna rise 35 units and you're gonna run one unit um, and you're gonna keep doing that. So it's a really steep slope um, compared to some of the other stuff we're used to, but we found it, that is our slope. Okay, let's wrap up with uh, three quick takeaways. One, rate of change. It's the ratio of the change in Y to the change in X. 
That's this right here. It's the same as the slope formula. Two, another way you can look at rate of change. It's, uh, it's the amount that the y value changes every time the x value increases by exactly one. So in this case, if we added one new video game to our order, we're gonna add exactly $35 every single time we add one new video game. And lastly, the rate of change is the same as the slope. So if you're looking at the slope of a line on a graph um, and you find out what it is, that is the rate of change. Every time X increases by one, the Y increases by whatever the rate of change is. For this particular example, it happens to be 35. For other examples, you can find it the same way. Okay, I believe in you, you got this. Let me know if you have any questions.